What's the worst thing you have ever done to an annoying neighbor? My dad was talking to our neighbor about what color he should paint the house and said, as a joke well I might as well paint the old one. House, blue ha ha. The neighbor became almost angry and said stuff like you cannot do that. A blue house? How stupid and annoying. How dumb etc. And that's how I grew up in a blue house. In our first house, my wife and I had a neighbor who disliked us from the start. Apparently the people that lived there before us were family friends who went through a divorce and we were the ones who bought their house. They were petty and mean to my wife who doesn't like confrontation. Parking across our driveway when she about to go to work. Throwing pieces of wood over the fence. Letting their dog crap on our lawn and not picking it up, etc. I tried talking to them a couple times too and was promptly told to f off. The husband loved his lawn care and used to brag about how it looked to everyone. So the next time it rained, I went out back and threw an entire box of OXO cubes into their backyard and let the rain melt them into the grass. Their dog absolutely destroyed their yard looking for the smell and I would make sure to comment on it every chance I got. We moved shortly after. What are OXO cubes like DPG treats? We lived in a neighborhood of townhouses. One neighbor let their dogs crap all over everyone's lawn and never picked it up. We tried asking them. We tried picking it up and putting it on their doorstep. They refused to do it. My one neighbor decided to get a piece of it and smear it all over the front of the house. After that, they started picking it up. I did something similar except my neighbor left his car window down. I had a grocery bag full and put it in his car. This was in the summer it was well over 100 degrees outside. His dog never pooped on my lawn again. When I was really young our neighbor, Druggy, demanded we move our septic tank because he claimed it was partially on his property. He was a complete jerk about it and kept at it. My dad's a really laid back person. Eventually even he got mad and had the property line surveyed. Turns out not only was the septic tank on our property, not his, but the corner of his house and part of his driveway was actually on our land. Dad spent the next few months asking him when he was going to move his house off our land. I wonder if he legally could remove the section of house and driveway on his property. Not me, but my grandpa. My grandpa's neighbor's septic tank started leaking into my grandpa's backyard. He repeatedly asked his neighbor to fix the septic tank and clean up the mess in his yard. The neighbor completely brushed him off. So my grandpa took matters into his own hands. He rigged up a plumbing system in his yard. He installed an upright PVC pipe that pointed at the neighbor's backyard over the fence. I don't know how the system worked. I was only about 8 years old, in the early 90s. But it was set up to spray the neighbor's own septic waste over the fence and into the neighbor's beautiful and polished yard. And just like that, the neighbor fixed his septic tank. They remained enemies until my grandpa died a couple of decades later. I miss that old crazy bastard. Never pee off the grandmas and grandpas. They will get back at you in a way you'll never expect. My mom's neighbor called the city to demand they make my mom repair her fence that divided their yards. This lady has always been a crab apple for 10 plus years, but this move pee my mom off. The fence did need a few mild repairs, which my mom would have done if the neighbor had just come talk to her. She was already in the process of getting quotes. The city contacts my mom and says you have to maintain your fence. My mom asks if she legally is to have a fence and the person she talked to could sense where this was going. Turns out there are rules about maintaining a fence, but not requiring you have one. So my mom pays a contractor to tear it down entirely. The neighbor does come to talk to my mom and asks when the new fence will be built. My mom says you want a fence. Build it yourself couple weeks later my mom has a nice new fence. Courtesy of one annoying neighbor. A little petty, perhaps, but hilarious nonetheless. This is the grown up version of your mom telling you to do the dishes while you were on your way to do the dishes. Not my story, but a friend of mine, let's call him John, had a neighbor, let's call him David, that would siphon gas out of everyone's vehicles. Nearly all of John's neighbors had cameras, so they knew who it was, but couldn't get the guy to stop. John went to the store to purchase a locking gas cap and while they had a bit of a light bulb moment, he decided to buy one for David's car instead. John waited until he was asleep, about 9am. Then installed the locking gas cap on David's car. Apparently, 
David flipped out and went door to door asking all of the neighbors he knew had cameras to tell him who did it. Miraculously, everyone's camera failed to work that day. John said the car sat up for about a week before David was able to remove it. After realizing how much his neighbors hated him, David decided to move. I had a terrible work schedule and had to wake up at 2.30 am to be at work by 4 am. My downstairs neighbors would blare loud music at all hours of the night, and I could feel the bass through my mattress. I went downstairs and politely asked them to turn down the music, and they seemed to kindly agree. As soon as I got back in bed, they turned it up even louder and kept it going until about 1.30 am. Before I left for work at 3.30, I turned over my amplifier so that the speaker was facing the floor, turned the volume up, and set my guitar on top of it. I left for my 12 hour shift, and the feedback was still screaming when I came home. Neighbors never played their music again. Here to say that this exact situation has happened to me and that is also exactly how I dealt with it. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. People don't always respond well to kindness. I decided to fence in my backyard and asked my neighbor if he would pay for half of the fence along his property line. He declined. I installed a fence around my backyard a few inches on my side of the property line. That neighbor then tied a new fence into my fence. He also tied into the neighbor's fence on the other side and the one behind his. So he only paid for about 40 feet foot of fence altogether and got his entire yard fenced in. Dong move. No big deal even though he got a few extra square feet of backyard and a free fence on three sides for free. Some time later his dog knocked a hole in my fence. He asked me to fix it since his dog could escape to my yard and then into the neighborhood. I declined. I told him to fix it since it was my fence and his dog did the damage. He called code enforcement and the homeowners association. Turns out that if I have a fence I have to keep my fence in good repair. I repaired the fence and then painted the side of my fence that faced his property highliner yellow, blue, green, mixed with slaves of black, crap brown. Turns out I get to choose the color of my fence as long as it is in good repair. He complained and was denied by the hoa he then painted my fence. I had him change with vandalism and he was fined and had to repaint my fence the original terrible colors. He then bulk emailed the entire subdivision and complained asking them to support him in his attempt to get me to paint my fence. Instead, the neighbor to his other side and behind him all painted their fences to match mine. He moved a few months later. Triple spite fence. He smeared his crap on my front door all because I was talking to his crush. Told the crush what he did and now he's known as the crap smearing pervert. Honestly not even bad at all. Just spreading true info. Friend had a neighbor who put in a very bright yard light that was pointed at her bedroom window. After a negative interaction when asking neighbor to ray a more dim the light or such. Cue theater stage hands. She put up a parabolic mirror pointed directly at dude's bedroom, used an old projector dowser, and an old lighting board to program a chase sequence that was hours long and repeated. End result was a beam of randomly blinking light that was aimed at neighbor's bedroom window. When he complained she let him know that it was his light source and all he had to do was turn off his yard light. Freaking brilliant. My grandmother had a neighbor over her back fence who refused to help her repair the fence between their properties. It was still functional as a boundary line, but it was falling apart. Any conversation about fixing the fence ended with him saying that it was on her property so it was her fence and therefore she was fully responsible, which was fair. She took a fall and was hospitalized for a few weeks. Upon her return, she found a new fence built an extra 5 feet into her property and a bill in the mail from the neighbor. He argued with her for months that she owed him, that the original fence was on his property and that where it was now was the boundary line. My grandmother got a surveyor and surprise. The original fence was correct and the neighbor had taken 5 featuring of her yard. At this point she was very old, frail, and tired of fighting her butthole neighbor. Instead, she let nature take over. She planted blackberries along the back fence and within two years it was covered. Every year, she'd walk the fence and throw seeds over because of course, it was still her yard. After five years of fighting, the blackberries had reclaimed her property. She's been gone for a few years now but the blackberries remain, her way of haunting her neighbor. He's tried ripping up the ones on his side of the fence on numerous occasions, 
but the plants reseed themselves and grow back every year from her side. Only a grandmother would fight back with doing gardening. They assaulted my dad because he told them to stop yelling at a woman parked in the road. So I bided my time for a few weeks then filled all the locks on their work van with super glue. If they had power locks with a remote, they won't know until it's an emergency. Haha. <laughs> Neighbor's dog kept crapping in the front. Like they opened the front door let him out and he crap in our yard. I asked them like 10x to just clean it up no problem. They outright refused so for about 2 months I went out picked it up put it in a 5 gallon bucket outside in the backyard when it was full of rain water and crap I walked over and dumped it on the front porch. It actually worked they started cleaning up after the dog. We actually have been cool since then. Here's a modification to your story. If that were to ever happen again, do exactly what you said but lean it up against their front door. Knock and run. This one's not my story, but my great grandfather's. My great grandfather was one of the last people in town to get indoor plumbing, and as such, had an outhouse in his backyard. Every year on Halloween, neighborhood kids would come into the yard and knock over the building and expose the cesspit. He got tired of it, so one year, the night before Halloween, he moved the building forward, then covered the fess with burlap, disguising it in leaves and grass clippings. In the dark, it was almost impossible to tell it was there. Halloween night, he sat in the outhouse and waited. It wasn't long after sundown when he heard the wet splat outside as a couple of kids fell into the muck. He lowered a ladder into the cesspit for them to leave after making them promise to never mess with his outhouse again. The kids honored their promise and even spread the word around the neighborhood not to mess with that outhouse anymore. I like your pappy. That's hilarious. Poured a bunch of boxes instant mashed potato powder on their lawn so later when it rained they had a lawn full of mashed potato. If I could upvote both this and the p-disc 1000 times, I would. In college I lived across from a frat house that would let people park in our spaces. Their router password was admin. So I logged into their router, banned all of their MAC addresses and changed the password. Never mess with a nerd who knows more about your crap than you do. Nice job. A friend of mine has a good one. She lived in a ground floor apartment with a patio that faced the street. Every apartment in the building had either a patio or balcony facing the same direction. One night she's outside on her patio having a glass of wine and relaxing. When a random dude she's never seen before comes walking down the street and rudely starts shouting at her. Dude explains that he lives across the street and the smell from her smoking cigarettes on her patio is bothering him. She explains that neither her nor her roommate smoke, so it must be coming from somewhere else. But this dude is adamant. She finally gets sick of being polite and tells him to leave her alone, and she goes inside. After that he harasses her constantly, yelling at her every time he walks or drives by, calling her a FB and insisting she is smoking. She wasn't, but even if she was, it's allowed by the complex, so there's nothing he could do about it. Sometimes he does it in the middle of the night, and it's so loud it wakes up my friend and other neighbors. From talking to other neighbors, she learns the guy is nuts. But he specifically hates women, and is probably targeting her because she is pretty and usually by herself. The last straw came when she was getting out of the shower and heard pounding on her patio door. The MF hopped her railing and was standing at the door peering through her blinds to yell at her. She gave her 30 days notice after that and moved. But once she in her new place, presumably where this guy wouldn't ever find her, she called me and asked for a favor. I worked at a bar at the time that had a big outdoor area. Lots of ashtrays out there to empty every night. I saved them up in a hefty bag for her every night I worked for like a month. And then gave her a super full bag. Apparently butthole guy's car didn't have AC or something. Because she had noticed he left the windows partially rolled down at night sometimes. She snuck over to the dude's car in the middle of the night and dumped the entire trash bag of old cigarette butts into his car. Handful by handful making sure they got everywhere, and then drove home to her new apartment and never heard from the butthole guy again. Had a neighbor in my apartment complex that kept letting her huge dog take huge shoots in my yard space. Literally got to about 20 huge dog shoots sitting outside my window and I had enough. Put on a glove and picked up all the crap and dumped it on her doorstep. Left a note stabbed into the ground telling her to pick up her dog crap. 
She started picking up the crap and moved pretty soon after lol. I was visiting my aunt a couple years ago in Arizona. She lives outside of Phoenix. Their next door neighbors had 3 or 4 kids who were super annoying. There was a brick wall dividing their backyards as is common for the area. Upon my arrival I find out that the kids next door throw things over the wall for fun. Not just like harmless twigs and pebbles but like rocks and toys and garbage and even knives. My aunt's family had to keep their trampoline on the other side of the yard so it wouldn't get crap thrown into it. I asked my aunt about it and she said she talked to the parents but they kept throwing crap. So that night I go online and file a police report with their address. Couple days later the neighbors left a note at the front door with this long apology it won't happen again blah blah blah. It pretty much stopped after that. Should have mounted the trampoline to rebound their throws. I put a spigot lock on our hose because she kept using my hose and flooding my flower bed in the process. The lady was pee. The rich brats next door were always throwing loud drunken parties when mom and dad went out of town for a few days, which was often. One Sunday morning I went out to find the corner of our lot, which was a school bus stop, littered with used condoms that had been left in the street or thrown into the grass. That night around midnight I gloved up and collected a bunch of them, then snuck into the neighbor's yard and scattered them around the pool, the garage, and the back door, where mom was sure to see them when she came home. There were no more parties. You wear a neighborhood condom. Proved 99% effective in preventing unwanted parties. In college, the guy in the dorm room next to mine was, apparently, a bit insane. He would bang on our shared wall whenever any noise happened. The first time he did it, I was just talking to a friend in my room at normal volume in the middle of the day. It kept going like this for months. He once banged on our wall for like 5 minutes because I sneezed. One day we noticed that he had a large pair of panties and a pair of earplugs taped to his door, with a note reading put on your big girl panties and deal with it. Apparently his neighbors on the other side were sick of him, too. So one weekend, I was leaving the dorm for the weekend, and he started banging on the wall because I flushed a toilet. That was the last straw. I ended up putting a Britney Spears song on repeat. Put my speakers up against his wall, and then left for the weekend, being sure to lock all the doors behind me. My parents have an extremely nosy neighbor who would just stand at the fence and watch what we do. I mean with her nose resting on the top of the fence. This woman is 60s with kids and grandkids. I found out the other day my dad was in the garden with a shovel. Turns out he throws the slugs and snails in their trampoline and on their veggie plot for being annoying every time they aren't there. I couldn't stop laughing at how petty and hilarious this was. Still makes my day. Edit spelling. Her nose resting on the top of the fence. This is where you glove up one night find some poison ivy and rub it all over the top where she snoops. See how much longer she pulls that crap after getting poison ivy rash up her nose. Upstairs neighbor was noisy late at night. Like 2am, music, loud footsteps, we had repeated conversations about it but he blew us off, bought us earplugs and told us to deal with it, unfortunately for him the breaker box for the building was in our unit, a few tests later with his friendly roommates who hated him just as much, we zeroed in on the breaker to his room and an unoccupied area, guess who had strange power issues at night when being disruptive, they would miraculously resolve at 7am. He wasn't the brightest bulb in the box and never did suspect us. The landlord was aware of his disruptiveness and he was already on thin ice. We let him know not to call the power C regarding his issues and he was on board. After assaulting one of his roommates over an unrelated incident, his butt was kicked to the street at the end of the lease. My house is right on the corner of an area where the road turns into a T. I had issues with people cutting the corner and driving through my yard. One day someone dang near hit my dog. I went and bought a boulder probably 300 or 400 pounds and put right on the corner. Come winter and we had a bad snowstorm. Someone was coming through in a lifted dodge and hit the boulder going about 20 and totaled the truck. Since then though I've had zero issues with people. My favorite part of this is that boulder is capitalized, like it's a member of the family. I think I was the annoying neighbor this one time, 
I used to live in a town home complex where the back porches were just slabs of concrete and there was a kind of field which joined all of them which was little more than a drainage field. One night I had like 5-6 friends over and we were on the slab grilling some chicken wings and generally laughing and having a good time. Not too loud. No music and we weren't trashed. But I imagine we were still audible to the other buildings. Woman from across the way starts hollering at us being loud and threatening to call the cops. A few of my friends were like frick that lady but I decided to take a different route. I plated up about 8 wings with the scratch made buffalo sauce which I'd invited everyone over to enjoy. I walked the food over to the lady on a paper plate and apologized for disturbing her. She told me she overreacted and was sorry for yelling at us. I told her it was okay, but told her I was concerned she'd probably had a crap day to be yelling at strangers for a little noise at 7pm on a Friday. She did have a crap day. I told her I was sorry and that we'd keep it at a reasonable level as a courtesy to her. A little while later she yelled back over that those were the best wings she'd ever had. And we gave a little cheer back to her. Never heard from her again. Hope her days are better now. Please be my neighbor. I won't even yell at you, but if you bring me tasty wings, I'll bake you a pie. When I was a kid, the neighbor's dogs, large breed, keep using our front and backyard for a bathroom. We asked on multiple occasions for them to clean up the fesses. They gave us a bunch of attitude about it and eventually they made a half acid attempt to clean up a small portions of it. Finally, after months of frustration and stepping in dog crap while mowing the grass, my dad cracked. He proceeded to pick up enough crap to fill a 5 gallon bucket, and then dumped all of it in their brand new grill and closed the lid. That put a stop to it real quick. Didn't realize how loud our home improvement projects were. Our units share a wall, and my neighbor works from home. Neighbor blew her top because she didn't know when the noise would end. Apologized with a gift basket of fruits and chocolate. Now we get along great. A lot of time communication is key. Prior to starting a project just putting a note on the doors of those affected saying you will do this and estimate it will take x amount of time will go a long way to help. Did you know you can sign up for the Jehovah's Witnesses to come to any address to teach you about their religion? You're welcome. Or you can buy a cheap book from Scientology using a gift card in someone's name. Scientology doesn't have an unsubscribe option. Loud party neighbors. All the time till 4 5 in the am. I would hijack their bluetooth speakers and play aggressive pee on full blast until they turned it off. Samuel L. Jackson Redding go the frick to sleep would have also been a hilarious choice. Neighbor had a bad habit of parking too many cars in our really small parking lot. There were only enough spots for 2 cars per apartment. 4 apartments total. They often had 3 to 5 cars parked. I always had to ask them to vacate our parking spots when we got home. Every day practically. The neighbor on the other side of me got their Pontiac stuck in the driveway because of the snow. They left it there overnight and come the next morning everyone needs to leave for work and whatnot. It's right in the middle of the driveway. I'm being yelled at by Pontiac neighbor and two men a car's neighbor. I guess they both expected me to fix the situation with my truck. I told me BF at the time we were not helping either of them. They both went to him and asked if my truck could be used to get the car out. My truck. Number. I dug out enough of the snow bank to get out and let them deal with it. Both of the neighbors got in my face and were yelling before I even said no. So it was a definite no. I give zero fricks if you're going to yell at me for an issue you created. Zero fricks. It was our neighbor's son. But at the neighbor's house. We had really small very close together houses in the sun. 50ish years old, would get off work and come over and stay in the backyard drinking and smoking. Nothing terrible, that part didn't bother me. He would always invite a friend over and drink until they passed out while burning stuff. Usually really rancid stuff like old painted fences, garbage, whatever would burn. All the while blasting a rock station. They literally had an old stereo wired into speakers in the backyard. I had asked them several times not to burn stuff and to turn the radio down but after hammering down a couple bud deletes they would be back at it. I was given a transmitter for my phone so I could listen to music in my car. This would essentially plug into the headset jack on my phone and I could set it on a specific radio frequency and then tune my car radio in and listen away. Well I found out that it had a pretty good range. 
so I used it to tune into the neighbor's favorite station and play my own lineup of Britney Spears and other assorted pop songs. Sometimes I would just leave it to static to mix things up. I would only do this on days where I wanted to be out in the backyard or they were being unusually loud. Probably around once a week. Outside of that I would just leave them be. But what was weird is on the days where I would mess with their radio, they would not go outside and didn't play a thing. The radio station they listened to was mostly classic rock and I know of at least one other station they could have tuned into to get similar lineups. I would have messed with that one too. But I never had to. Once their fav station was offline that was it for them for the day. Glad to say I moved away from there and have outstanding neighbors now. When I was 10 or so an old lady yelled at my brother and I for sitting on her curb. And not just yelled she really bitched us out. So we got the bright idea to have an estate sale for her. We got up at like 4am on Saturday morning and put up homemade cardboard garage sale signs we made with her address on them and early birds welcome in bold letters. We then sat on the curb a little down the street across from her house and watched people bang on the door for an hour or so. The best part is we didn't put a date on the sign so if she didn't find all the signs presumably people would keep showing up every Saturday. Estate garage sailing here is an aggressive sport. Sign. Starts at 8am. No early birds. Early birds. Well looks like we have to wait out front from 6am then. Pretty tame if you ask me but in my old place I had upstairs neighbors who would smoke and then throw the sig butts off the balcony and onto my patio. I was on ground floor. So I used to just kick them over in front of their door. The same with garbage. They would just throw things over sometimes and instead of picking it up I would just kick it in front of their door. Had a neighbor who smoked and threw their butts into our garden. I would pick them up and throw them back over their fence. Stopped after a few times. Not me, but my mom. We have this neighbor that's basically a psychopath. She hates all animals, especially dogs, and is the type to smear hot pepper sauce wherever she sees the neighborhood stray cats roam on or near her property. Well, it's safe to say she was absolutely livid when we had two dogs for three-ish years. They were decently well trained and only barked on command, but she was mad they were big and did their business in mom's completely fenced in backyard. So one day she calls the city and says we have multiple corpses in our backyard and rats that were feasting on them in the hopes that it would get our dogs taken away. My mom finds this out when a city health inspector randomly shows up at our door and insists on walking the property with a printed report in hand. We obviously have neither of those things on our property, and the nice inspector said he'd flag all future reports from the anonymous caller against us so we wouldn't get bothered again. Neighbor blows her cover two-ish weeks later asking us if we had any special visitors lately and are we finally getting rid of our creatures. Anyway, the only thing psycho neighbor seems to love is her garden. It's solely potted plants and vines that she likes to try and grow into my mom's fence that is solely on mom's property line, which mom hates as neighbor has the tendency to reach over our fence to hack at our trees and bushes. Mom waits until neighbor is at a weekday church service on the day before we leave for a long weekend and dumps three bottles of Roundup into every single pot that this lady pushed against our fence. The plants all mysteriously died the Sunday after we left with no one to blame it on. Not only was neighbor completely mystified but she seemed to take it as a divine sign and has tried to apologize to my mom and make up for her years of haggishness to all the other neighbors on our block ever since. Mom still refuses to speak to her though, and only one old lady neighbor agreed to be her friend lol. My neighbor is a cop and his kids always would come over to my yard and throw rocks at my house. Screech loudly, harass my chickens and leave their coop open, etc. I put up a no trespassing sign and they still showed up. I put up some wire fencing and they still showed up. There was nothing I could actually do to get them in trouble because they are above the law since their dad is the law. But luckily last year I worked at a Halloween store and so I put a rubber pig mask on the light post in my backyard and he doesn't let his kids over here anymore lol. Out of the office you need a motion detector that makes pig noises when activated, too. Ha ha ha. So I'm sitting here, in my gas mask, cruising reddit because my neighbor is a moron. What nightmare neighbor stories do you have? Austin, Texas. I live in a duplex behind Chai's on N. Lamar. I work pretty early, and on the weekends, and generally go to bed around 11pm. This Friday night, 
My neighbors in the duplex on the far side of me threw a welcome home from jail party for somebody. Sure enough, loud music late at night. But I figure meh, it's Friday. People should be able to party plus. Like the Blues Brothers say, you can't call the cops on him. He just got out of the joint, so I just try to tune it out. Not so for the neighbor who I share my backyard fence with. He comes out and tells them to shut the frick up. Be angry words are shouted back and forth. Kind of across my yard. Pretty soon, it becomes threats. At this point, I start to get the phone and dial. I will freaking shoot your butt. Mother bring it, B. I'm in the 512 crips. I think that's what he said you're in the 512. So am I no crap well. Come on over and have a beer crisis averted. Music turned down. No double murders at night. TLDR. Murder averted by gang. I've heard this exact story before. Told almost verbatim. You and I. We know each other. Somehow. If that building was built prior to 1978 you may be exposed to lead from the paint dust. This would be an extremely dangerous situation that could result in major health problems. If this is the case it would be a violation of the EPA's Renovate Ride program. And likely violations of your local clean air laws, department of ecology laws, and other applicable environmental regulations. You should really get this checked out. Source. I am a Washington state certified lead inspector and risk assessor. Building was built in 1912. W00T. I once lived in an apartment where the wall was thin. The neighbor's bathroom was on the same wall as my bedroom. The neighbor had the loudest flatulence I've ever heard in my life and he liked to come home late at night, run a bath, and let it all rip. He could hear me rofl and he'd be like it's not funny dude. Anytime we saw each other around the complex it would be kinda awkward. I'm sitting here imagining your neighbor sitting naked in the bathtub yelling at you through the wall. I live next to a bitter old man, probably about 78 years old. When we let our dogs out, usually it's just for a few minutes so they can do their business. But it was one of the first nice days we'd had in a while, so we let them be outside for a while. They both went to the front of our house to lay in the sun. Although they've never gone off our property, I guess our neighbor was spraying his lawn with weed killer, because he walked over to where our dogs were laying and sprayed it in their faces. Their cries and whimpers were one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard. They sounded like they were in so much pain, and I was in my room when it happened. My mom saw what was happening, stormed outside, and started screaming through tears at him. My mom is usually a very calm person. I've never heard her that upset. She took the dogs to the closest vet, and thankfully they're both okay still. That's pretty fricked up. I had a neighbor who had a drug induced mental break and decided to break into my house in the middle of the night. He was in serious tinfoil hat territory. Told me the aliens that were beaming the movies into his brain said he had to come talk to me. Took me several attempt to get him off the proverbial ledge but eventually I had to get the cops involved. Downward spirals are terrifying to witness. I lived in the basement suite of a fourplex and the people above me were awful, as was my roommate, but that's a totally different story. The guy's alarm would go off every day at 5.30am. It would go off continuously for 2 hours when he would actually get up around 8. No snooze but nor anything, just constantly blaring the entire time. On multiple occasions I would get mad enough to go up and bang on his door to get him up and shut off the alarm. He was nice but never changed, until he got a roommate. She was a prostitute, which I don't really harbor any negative opinions over. The problem was that she did her business at home and my room was directly under hers. Sometimes I would be outside having a cigarette and these guys would come out with their head down and scurry off. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night to someone outside my window. Tapping on hers, above mine, to get her to answer the door. I would hear her freaking dudes almost every day. But the worst part of it all was that the only song I ever heard her listen to, ever, was Creed. With arms wide open. Every day, that song. At least a few times. Day and night. I still cringe thinking about it. Oh god. Anything but Creed. This past summer my neighbors had neglected a yappy dog they adopted the year before. Now, please understand that we do not live directly beside our neighbors, 
and we didn't see that they were giving their dog water and food on a regular basis. The July heat rolls around and we notice that the dog disappeared from its usual perch beside their house. A week or so later, we start smelling this foul stench coming from their yard in a tall patch of bush. My father drove his ATV through the bush and discovers the stench is coming from a black garbage bag. He calls the police and they come to investigate. They determine it's their dog. It had liquefied due to the heat wave. A conservation agent pays our neighbors a visit and notifies them they have until 5 p.m. to dispose of the animal. So, here is the best part. My lovely neighbors set the liquefied dog aflame. We guessed they poured gas on the bag and lit a match and walked away. It broke my heart when they got another dog a month later. TL doctor. Neighbors neglected their dog. It passed away. Then the lovely neighbors set it on fire. This is why I keep a dog at close hand when red eyeing. Emergency hug situations. While I was going to college I lived in my mom's apartment with her. The building only had 4 units in it. Her neighbors across the hall and down one floor would perform sexual olympics on an almost nightly basis. I'm talking out of proportion screaming and banging on the walls. Think of the most hot porno you can and you may be close. It was obviously done so that people would hear it. Same neighbors were selling weed out of their apartment, which was right across the hall from where the lone lady lived. They left a quart size ziplock bag full of the stuff out on the front porch one day, apparently for someone to pick up. It was hidden in a potted plant. Landlady found it, knew what it was, threw it out. I can only imagine their panic. Also, since they were shady as heck, they found my mother's phone number on a piece of trash, I'm assuming, and gave it to debt collectors as their primary phone number. Neighbors had a giant end lab built under their rented house, including but not exclusively fake walls, burn furniture from an explosion, huge amounts of chemical burns in the backyard, and later a newborn baby, all in a very 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 suburban upper middle class area. I didn't know Walt brought Holly to Jesse's house for him to babysit. Once, I came home and the SWAT team was surrounding my building. My downstairs neighbor was holed up with a lot of ammo and was threatening to kill his wife and kid. By shooting into the ceiling. My neighbor from behind my mom's house once literally asked her, Why don't you use the master bedroom? I never see you go in there with my binoculars. He wasn't joking. She actually doesn't use the master bedroom, which is visible from his back window. On top of that, he is also probably a racist. He started harassing the repair guy from DirecTV, who happens to be black. This guy had a uniform, expensive equipment, and everything. He claimed he looked like he was doing something suspicious. Oddly enough, he didn't seem to think the white kid who did try to break in, in broad daylight no less was suspicious. On top of that he asks my mom one morning if he could have his lawn man remove a tree that he didn't like. Seeing as how it was on our property, even the branches, it was small, on that strip of land next to driveways. She said no. Three hours later, bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
There was never quiet for very long. I couldn't really call the police, because they wouldn't do anything when I did call them, and my neighbors would punish me for calling by smearing dog crap on my door and leaving garbage around my front step. I was the new guy living in the complex, and a lot of people were noisy like her, so she knew it was me calling the cops. Eventually, you just learn to sleep with Kesha blasting through the paper thin walls. I was so glad when I finally moved out. You should have pee frisbeed that mess. Freeze your pee in a frisbee, decant it onto some wax paper, slide it under the door, then work the paper back out. When I was 14 I lived in a duplex with an elderly woman and her husband, my family and I on the bottom floor. She had smoked when younger and was in possession of oxygen tanks, and an obvious past drug user. Now we knew she wasn't the greatest of people from day one, but her husband was an awesome, also elderly man. He collected scrap metal, and one day, when locked out, he climbed to the second story Spider-Man style and went in through the window. The year we moved into the house was turbulent for my family, but we were okay. My mother was with her dying grandmother over Thanksgiving, and the same time and day her grandmother died so did this woman's husband. We offered condolences, and part of our Thanksgiving meal to her, and we had always been kind to them. Christmas wasn't the greatest to begin with that year, but it would end tragically. Around 10pm Christmas night we were going to head to bed. All of us tired, but my sister insisted we watch the movie she had bought for me. The Goonies box set, and so we put it on. Opening credits my mom smells something and my father heads to the kitchen window. It smells smoky. I immediately head to the room in between the two houses and the door to this lady's apartment is wide open, filled with smoke and fire spitting from the stairs. I call 9, 1, 1, get my dog out of the house, and my dad rushes upstairs with a fire extinguisher full ready to pull this woman out of a burning building. Turns out the fire had been burning for 30 minutes, and this lady had tried to put it out for 20 minutes, then ran across the street to her drug addicted friend's house. No one calls the fire department, no tells us, you literally cannot leave the building without passing that door. She made an active decision to leave us. All the neighbors thought the police had been called, and soon enough everyone in town is at my house, staring at me and my house in my Christmas pajamas, watching my house burn. My mother, upset, shouts, oh my god the house is in fire shocked. The woman turns to her and says, what are you talking about? My house is on fire. In the process of recovering our things in the freezing weather of a New York winter this woman tries to steal from us twice. From the wreckage of our charred, severely water damaged home. That is my worst neighbor experience. It's a very good thing you stayed up to watch the Goonies. Once again they saved a life. Was baking cookies. Forgot they were in. Building is evacuated for massive amounts of smoke. Had to run out in my underwear in 30 degree weather. Not cool. Comma had to run out in my underwear in 30 degree weather. Not cool. Sounds plenty cool to me. Current neighbor has had my parents and other neighbors go to court and arrested because of him. Long story short, he has a history of messing with the law because of his connections. So he likes to frick with his neighbors, trying to get them put in jail. For his own pleasure, he files protective orders against my parents, yet stalks them to their workplace. He's gone to the restaurant my mother works at to eat. Keep in mind he knows she works there, and has a protective order against her because she threatens him, and sits there for hours just staring. Every time someone calls the cops on him, the officers take his side and we end up getting fricked over. One of my neighbors was arrested last night he, the neighbor who was arrested, called the police because the fucked a neighbor was flashing a laser pointer from his porch at him and my father. Cops came, said my, good guy, neighbor was violating the, fucked neighbor's protective order, and had him arrested. He's on probation due to a DUI so he'll probably be gone for a while. All thanks to this freak. Well, from the other perspective, last night one of my mates somehow puked diagonally onto our downstairs neighbor's porch screen. To put that into perspective, our balcony extends perhaps 4-5 or five feet out past the level of their screen. I have no idea how he did it, I only know that it is difficult to clean puke off of a screen. I'm not even mad, that's impressive. Looking at the screenshot of your house you posted, I don't think it'd be that extreme to call the police, 
If that is all dust, the screenshot is difficult to see. If you didn't have a gas mask that could seriously frick with your lungs. You know you've been on the internet too long when you refer to a photo as a screenshot. S. Constantly drunk college girls. Sounds great in theory, but when they live above you, and stomp like centaurs up and down the stairs throwing their beer cans at the wall, it's not fun. It's amazing how dainty little college girls can do more oral damage than a freaking high speed train derailment. Allow me to tell you the tale of Vanderman. First day of welcome week my freshman year, I'm put in a small group to tour the campus and whatnot. We're all sitting in a room, learning each other's names and in comes a 7 foot giant. She's barely dressed with horrible tattoos all the way up to her butt cheeks, which are entirely visible to everyone in the room. She informs us she is a go-go dancer, which ain't a stripper so don't be throwing cash at this n. Actual quote. She's odd to say the least, but hey, who am I to judge her? I didn't realize she lived right next door to me. The first night on campus and there's a loud ruckus in her room. Now I'm a pretty tolerant person, but this was ridiculous. I go out of my room and can hear her screaming a dude's name. I go down the hall, and can still hear her clear as day. Finally, I go down the hall, around a corner and into a closet area, curious just how far her voice carried. Still able hear her screaming. It was a long night. Fast forward through the year. Every night she has multiple dudes over and runs a train on herself. Blasts god awful music until 3am. And my personal favorite. Shouts on the phone at all times. I don't know what kind of cell plan this bee had. But it must have included unlimited calling. She talked to people in the bathroom, which was shared by about 20 other people, usually putting them on speakerphone so she could crap and talk without having to hold the phone to her head. Or she'd be shouting to them while she was in the shower, or yelling at someone in her room loudly enough I could hear the whole conversation. The conversations usually went something like this. A w heck nah dat b threw a shoe at my head. I t was a frickin high heel. Dat c but mother. S-H-O-O-O-B-I taking out my trash ITB full as frick of these nasty butt rubbers. I must have sent in at least a dozen complaints to the housing director, but she stuck around till the end of the year. It got to the point that I was hoping she was murdered when she was out for the entire night, but of course, she was always alive and well the next morning. I've got two interesting experiences. I live in the Netherlands in a type of 1930s apartment that seems to be unique to this country, with my own front door at street level leading into a small staircase with some steep stairs, and the rest of the apartment on second and third floor level. I have one downstairs neighbor, one on the left and one on the right. The walls are pretty thin. The neighbors left from me were three or four immigrants from some African country and were obviously careless as well as very noisy, including at night. They never gave me any other sort of trouble, except that they would often get random visitors at 3am or something, and sometimes one of them would ring my front door instead of theirs by mistake. One day, all of a sudden a SWAT team came and busted in their front door so violently that my wall got damaged too. I looked and they yelled at me to get away from the window. One of the guys tried to flee over the balcony onto the inner courtyard but was caught in time and ended up on my balcony, so the officer kindly asked if he could come into my place to escort the guy out my front door. Later a lady from the police came and asked me if I had any questions or wanted to talk about the experience. They wouldn't tell me what they had done, though, but it seems pretty likely that they were drug dealers. My neighbor on the other side was clearly lonely and in bad health. He never seemed to get any visitors. Sometimes I would hear him through the wall making bizarre noises at 4am or so. One day the police showed up and sealed off his apartment. Investigation of a possible crime is all they would tell me. I think he offed himself but I never got an answer. About a month later some housing association guys came with a truck and I heard and saw all his stuff being thrown unceremoniously out his living room window and onto the trailer. Felt bad. The people who since moved into these apartments are fine. Yeah I used to clean up stuff like that. They guy probably died in the house. If they are using a saw, that probably means they are removing damaged drywall or floorboards. That only happens when either a bullet brain matter gets caked on the walls. Or the body sits in its own fluids for a few too many days and destroys the wood below it. My neighborhood isn't the greatest. The house across the street is sort of a duplex, 
There's a creepy old man in the front who gets wasted off his butt every night and sometimes comes and professes his love to me. While sober he's a super sweet and helpful old guy but get a couple drinks in him and he's a nutbag. One night he had Eye of the Tiger blasting while he was karate chopping and spin kicking the air. I was sort of amazed at his agility. Regardless of how sloppy, a random man walked down the street and he told him he was going to punch his face in. Then did some sort of tuck and roll and he i i yay had the air. Just this afternoon he came stumbling over, asked why I don't come talk to him. I'm always courteous towards him. I don't believe in disrespecting my elders. I don't really feel in danger. I just think he's lonely. When I tell him I have a boyfriend he just responds saying he doesn't mind. He just loves me. The people who live in the back of the house is his seekhead daughter, her seekhead boyfriend and her two year old. I am on the verge of calling CPS considering they have literally fought from 11pm at night until 5am outside up and down the street, leaving the poor baby in the house by herself with the door wide open. I thought she was being babysat by the old man until I saw him pull up, shake his head at the two and go in and get his granddaughter. The mother has left that baby outside in her stroller by herself while she's in the house doing god knows what. I'll sit on my porch and watch the baby to make sure nothing happens to her, and to make sure her mom comes back out to get her in a, relatively, timely manner. The situation makes me sick to my stomach. The reason I'm hesitant to call CPS now is I'm a single mom and my daughter is with me almost full time. I'm afraid of starting a war with CKEDS but I definitely keep an eye on that house quietly to protect my own little girl. I'm not sure how much I can do legally and safely. I wish I could go get her and take care of her myself. I'm relatively new to the area so I'm just now recognizing these problems as well as my next door neighbor keeping me informed since she's nosy and doesn't work so she's got time on her hands. I've seen and heard crazy things in this neighborhood. There's fighting going outside right now. Had to pause this comment to go help a neighbor. I know this comment will be buried and it's long winded and all over the place but dang it feels good to get that off my chest lol. TL. DR. My neighborhood sucks. Get out before it's too late. You're living on a powder keg. Some of my neighbors across the street are drug dealers. And a guy confused their address with an old guy in the same complex and murdered the old man with a machete. I can think of few things less neighborly than killing someone with a machete. I'm moving when my lease is up. We live in a wooded neighborhood about 30 minutes from the nearest large city, 15 from the nearest town, and less than a minute from a volunteer fire department. For many years, there were no houses within sight of ours. We had empty lots on either side, and trees and tall grass between the front and back. But then someone buys the land to one side of us, spends months getting it ready, very loudly I might add, then puts an ugly mobile home right by the fence. They then let their large dog roam free. This wouldn't be a problem, except he loves to dig under the fence and jump on us. Fast forward a year or two. After many times of them chaining the dog up and it's still getting in our yard, it kills our chihuahua mix. Not long after they move out. What kind of amazing place do you live in? I love it. Very beautiful. Get the pups or kitties out of there too. Don't let them breathe that stuff either. In the next few days weeks, there's a very good chance you'll start smelling some paint fumes or polyurethane solvent. Seems like a reasonable thing to do after the sanding is done. Lay down a bit of paint. Now you don't want these fumes stinking up your crib. I recommend taking every fan you can beg borrow steel and set them up blowing into your apartment. Just to keep the fumes down, of course. Positive pressure. It's a bit unfortunate. But some of this massive dust cloud, especially the crap that's stuck in the cracks between the floors, just might get returned along with the fumes and convert all that fresh new shiny paint into a nice gritty sandpaper finish. I live down the street from a miserable old woman. She sets up tuna traps in her backyard to catch neighborhood cats and dogs and call the pound. She caught my cat when I was 11 and left the most apathetic voicemail on the home phone Thanksgiving Day. Many people participate in programs to capture feral cats and dogs, often with loan traps from the local humane society. By the sound of it, that's what she was doing, rather than just pee people off for old person giggles. If she really wanted to kill your cat, she wouldn't have called, presumably to give it back. My roommate liked to disinfect hairbrushes by boiling them. 
Well one day, he put a couple brushes on the stove and then left. I was taking a nap upstairs and luckily smelled the smoke and woke up. No smoke alarms. That kinda sucked too. The whole house was filled with toxic smoke. The kind you get when plastic burns. I had to run outside in my underwear and hang out there till the smoke cleared. What a moron. Dude, if your house doesn't have a smoke detector, you get one. You shouldn't rely on other people. Your landlord, roommate, etc. For your personal safety, you could have been killed that day. I'm seeing this a bit late, but I'll post anyway because it's good to get this kind of stuff out. Over the last 10 or more years my neighbor has poisoned neighbor's dogs, smashed my dad in the head several times with tennis rackets and frying pans sending him to the hospital because my dad was trying to save the dude's then wife from his physical verbal abuse. Had M labs parked in the backyard. Had numerous sketchy friends stay over for months at a time. Hit his own children. Verbally abuses his own mother. Steals from her. Allows his crack addict stripper girlfriend to steal from her. Manipulates his mother into getting him out of jail every time he's put in. Is a constant annoyance for me and my mother loud fighting with stripper girlfriend. I would go on. But these are the things that really stick out in my mind. He's been put in jail several times over the last 10 plus years, but somehow he always finds his way out. Rented a room in what I later realized was a sketchy part of the city. Landlord owned both sides of a semi-detached house and told me he'd put me in the normal people half. One of my roommates is a woman named Charity, who later told me that she was half aboriginal Canadian and was studying dental administration in college. So far everything is fine as she is paid by the landlord to keep the place clean and everyone keeps to themselves. About a week in, though, I start noticing that she's always bringing these random dudes home, who I keep bumping into in the kitchen. They are typically big, muscular black guys, always a different dude each time. This was a bit strange considering she was quite the opposite of in shape and attractive, but whatever. Maybe she found a trove of ripped chubby chasers. Then came the loud, loud sex that would last hours and hours of her screaming like a dying elk. Three months later, I find out that she's actually married and has an apartment down the street with her husband, but she rents out her room so that she can hire male prostitutes and have sex with them. What is your worst experience with bad neighbors? Their dogs got into my backyard and attacked my dog. My dog ended up okay but it was a long recovery and he still doesn't walk right. He was and is the happiest dog ever so to see him on the ground covered in blood was the worst thing ever. The dogs were able to get through because their kids had taken a plank out of my fence. They didn't have a fence. I left a letter on their door explaining the situation. They showed up at my door to tell me that it was my fault for not having a stronger fence and that they wouldn't be paying any medical bills. After a lot of them yelling and me calmly explaining why they actually would be paying, they eventually complied. They did build a fence, backwards, with the flat side facing them. They are also loud as frick. Got chickens that escape on a regular basis in our suburban neighborhood and are overall scummy people. Lived in a small apartment and my neighbors always cranked up their music to 11. Like loud, loud, and until something like 7am, maybe later. But that's when I would leave for work. It was so loud that I couldn't hear my own TV over it. My neighbors and I would bang on the door but they would never open the door. It was like trying to sleep at a festival. Then at some point I found out they often left for a bar across the street but would just leave the music on. So I would pull the breaker for their apartment. But they would just come back at 5am and turn it back on. It was reported by heaps of people. But nothing was ever done, so at some point I would jam their lock when they went out so their keys wouldn't work anymore and they had to get the property manager in while the music was blasting inside. After a couple of times of that happening they were evicted. Maybe I'm the bad neighbor in this story. You did the rest of your neighbors a good deed. When I started my first job post college, I was thrilled to live by myself for the first time in my life. I had this beautiful one bedroom apartment in a solid part of town. Everything was great until 6 months later, when new tenants moved in next to my unit. I had a package go missing, a phone case. Amazon had posted a photo of it at my door, so I thought that it was just a fluke. Then it happened again, and again, and again. The office wouldn't accept packages, 
so I had to get my items delivered to friends places instead. Overall wildly inconvenient and the police didn't care in the slightest when I reported it, so I just figured I'd deal with it. Fast forward a few weeks, and I come home after being gone for less than an hour, to see that my doorknob and front door were scrapped up and the knob was barely hanging on. Long story short, I had been parking in plain view of this guy's window, so he was able to tell when I was home. I am 100% convinced he tried to break into my place, and that me coming home early interrupted him. I googled his name after I moved. I got it off a package at his door, and found that he was a convicted felon with charges that include grand theft auto, domestic assault, drug dealing, and an attempted break-in. Lived on the bottom floor of a two-story Victorian. There was very little sound insulation between the two floors. When we moved in there was a friendly older couple that had a dog. We could hear it running around but honestly no big deal. Then they moved out and these three young guys moved in. Seemed nice at first but they turned out to be horrible. Officially the rental agreement said quiet hours started at like 9pm. We basically told them, look, we're usually out of the house a lot and not home until late. As long as you're quiet by midnight during the week and 2am, bar time, on weekends they're cool. This seemed incredibly reasonable to me. Within a couple weeks of them moving in it was non-stop crappy techno music being blasted at all hours. As we had said, we weren't home much so that didn't bother us all that much. What did was the Tuesday night parties going until 4am. I'd go to their front door to ask them to quiet down and it would take a few minutes of ringing the doorbell and pounding before anyone would come down. Usually eyes were glazed over from either booze or drugs. I complained to their landlord multiple times but nothing really fixed it. I finally just started calling the cops and that would get them to stop for that night at least. The final straw was they had a party with easily 60 or 70 people. Again, not a big deal, until it was 3am and the club music was blasting and everyone decided jumping up and down would be a great idea. I actually could see the ceiling flexing. I finally sat down and wrote a cease and desist letter detailing the city's noise ordinances and various other legal crap that would give me cause to sue them and put it in their mailbox. But sent it to their landlord as well. That stopped things. Should have done it months before that. Finally the landlord had enough I guess because he came in and raised their rent to something insane like $6,000 a month. We live in an expensive city but that was like 2x market rate at least. There was no rent control for this building so they were out within the month. Was pretty glorious to hear them yelling at each other about finding a new place to live. Definitely the shithead 19 year olds that lived next door to me when I was finishing up college that screamed at call of duty at the top of their lungs through paper thin walls every night when they got killed. Who also threw a pumpkin on the roof of my car, causing $3k worth of damage which is considered felony vandalism in Michigan. I finally got them to confess and basically gave him a stern talking to as a 22 year old that was just done with college nonsense at that point and told him I wasn't going to press charges as long as his insurance paid for it. Later that year when his roommate was flipping out about COD and yelled something along the lines of goddamned freaking hackers. Everyone is freaking cheating. What the frick is this bulls? I hate this game. Bunch of freaking losers and cheaters. Which was very clear through my bedroom wall while I was studying. So I didn't hesitate. Since it had been months of that, after he got done with his tantrum and said, That sounds like you just suck at COD. Bro. I heard a crash of what sounded like a controller being banished to the shadow realm. And then didn't hear anything from him for a month. It was glorious. I'm absolutely amazing. Get gud. Apartment building the upstairs neighbor's dog peed on their patio and it dripped down onto me while I was sitting outside reading. I yelled and ran to shower and when I texted them to ask them to take their dog out to pee in future they said it wasn't their dog and it must have blown over from somewhere else. What? Bro. That is next level. I have a few from the same neighbor who I'll call Linda. Linda would often have men outside the apartment building that she locked out screaming her name. But the best story regards a boyfriend Linda had who insisted my roommate and I call him the captain. About a week after meeting him, we came home to a wedding announcements for Linda and the captain. Yes, his name was the captain on the announcement. Exactly one week later still, the captain was arrested outside our apartment building for public intoxication at 2am while screaming I've made a huge mistake. Frick you Linda. A huge mistake. 
I'm ruined. Okay, but there's potentially an amazing backstory here that we're missing and it's gonna drive me nuts. I used to live in a horrible apartment with paper thin walls. The people next door were a woman who looked like she was in her 70s and what I thought was her 30 something grandson. They would yell at each other all day, constantly blast their TV, and the smell of their cigarette smoke would waft through into my apartment and make the place absolutely reek. The worst was at night when the two of them would have loud sex, which is how I figured out they weren't related. Every night for an hour, creaking bed banging against my bedroom wall and the old woman moaning like a stuck pig. Nightmarish. I also think the guy kept track of my schedule and watched for me because whenever I came home or went out, even when I took out the garbage, he would be there outside his place, trying to chit chat with me while staring at my body and being completely gross. Lived there a year, but it felt like 10. They could still be related. We had some neighbors that used to leave their garbage out in plastic bags the night before garbage day, instead of putting it in a bin, around here. That's just ringing the dinner bell for raccoons and other critters. Sure enough come morning there's garbage strewn all over the neighborhood. What the raccoons and skunks didn't spread around. The wind picked up the slack. Some of the people on the street kindly approached the guy and asked him to put his garbage in a bin. He told them to go frick themselves. Thus began the garbage wars. Every morning of garbage day some people on my street would collect all the half eaten and rotten trash from their lawns and toss it back into the dude's backyard. He would collect it, then dump it back on their lawns, or cram it into their bushes. People started finding half eaten burritos and candy wrappers in their mailboxes. The street started to look like a slum. Police were called, health inspectors, city by law enforcement. Each side was calling in whatever authority they could muster to get their enemy in crap. The dude and his family, amazingly his wife seemed perfectly pleasant, lasted about 8 months then moved. Every once in a while I find a random margarine lid or piece of styrofoam in my hedge, and my mind goes back to those dark days of war. Thank you for your service. I lived in an apartment with slot of rotating tenants. An elderly lady moved in across the hall from me promptly started hoarding. I started to figure it out when her deck porch started to fill up with odds and ends furniture including but not limited to a roll top desk. She also yelled at me once for taking her key out of the front door and putting it in the mail slot. Anyway after a couple of weeks I started to realize I hadn't seen her in a while and started to smell something real weird. Turns out she had died and no one knew about it for a week hence the smell. Her family came and cleared out all her stuff about a week after that. This is Wisconsin in the winter and I had my good Doc Martin work boots outside my door because they were wet. They used one of my boots to prop open their door while they moved out and then stole them when they were done. Not the Doc Martins. Oh. I rented a flat with an ex and the upstairs neighbor was an absolute nightmare. Deadbeat dad who had his kid every weekend and left them screaming all the time. He'd blast music until sunrise every day even when he had his kid. Got the council involved, nothing happened. Got child services involved, nothing happened. He used to argue every Sunday with his ex about how he wasn't paying child support. They'd argue right outside our door. We were on the ground floor. The guy was unemployed, owed the landlord a lot of money, and only left his flat to get groceries or drugs. He kicked off at me because my cat meowed loudly once. Honey I told you I will get the freaking money by next month 11 exclamation point 11111 exclamation point 1111. Hey man get that cat under control I can barely hear my thoughts. My current neighbors will randomly light bombshell fireworks in the middle of the night during the middle of the week as if some of us don't have to wake up early for work. Also when I was younger and living in a different city our front neighbors stole our dog from our backyard one day and we didn't find out it was them until a few months later when we saw our dog in their yard. They denied they stole it and wouldn't give it back to us until we got the police involved. I'm so glad you got your dog back. They were crackheads. They had two kids, were physically and verbally abusive to each other and were hoarders on top of it. Tried calling child protective services and the police over and over and was never taken seriously. They ended up burning down their apartment and caused thousands of dollars in damage to the rest of the apartment building because they were cooking em. We had to move out, 
as did many others. The silver lining is that they finally got their kids taken away after that. I used to live in a house that was split into two apartments. My neighbors had the lower half, and I learned we had issues with the HVAC when their cigarette smoke came visibly pouring out our registers, stank up everything we owned, then one of them stole my car. Dude pretended to be a reverend but was actually just a filthy freaking hoarder. He insisted on wearing sandals all of the time, and whenever he left his flat, the entire stairwell would stink of century old and washed feet. Eventually, the beetles that had infested his flat crawled up and into our kitchen and then everywhere. Took months to get him evicted. Frick that guy. Moved into a crappy apartment in a building that was occupied by basically the worst people in the area. Pretty rural small town, junkies, alcoholics etc. I moved there because I don't have a driver's license and I needed to live close to my new job at a cafe. No buses in the area, except school buses, and it was relatively cheap. Anyways, one night when I came home from work, I met two of my neighbors by the entrance to the building. These two were living wall to wall with me, and I had listened to their drugged up Saturn alias more than once. They started following me up the stairs, not saying a single word, just following me. I rush inside and lock the door, when they start hammering at it, yelling, hammering their hands at the door so hard I thought they would break it. I yelled back at them what the frick do you want, leave me alone. They stopped their hammering and the man said, with a fragile voice, we were just wondering if we could borrow your pee for a drug test tomorrow. I not so politely declined, told them to frick off and called the police. Didn't live there for much longer, I'll tell you that. Had one that would basically steal our mail and other stuff from our porch and yard. Caught her once to confront her and she started yelling at me to stop attacking her and tried to say I was stealing her stuff. Ended up with the police getting called and us filing a restraining order against her. As a postal employee, you should have called the USPIS. They don't frick around. I've posted this before. Our neighbor was tossing bags of her vomit into my yard for about a year, like 50 bags. Called the cops. Turns out she had an eating disorder she was hiding from her parents. My neighbor once shot both my dogs and his goat and made me bury both. One dog survived thankfully. He then tried to make us pay for a new goat claiming that our dogs attacked it. The goat had bullet wounds and no bite marks. The dude's a psychopath. Lived in an apartment building with little better than paper for walls. You could clearly hear the next door neighbors conversations. Them having sex. Walking up the stairs. Etc. For some reason they thought it would be totally awesome to install a surround sound system and affix the speakers to our shared wall. It was not awesome. It was so loud that it literally shook the wall. And we couldn't hear our own television unless we turned it up ridiculously loud in return. The neighbors did not respond kindly to our request that they place the speakers elsewhere, or at least turn the bass down. It ultimately ended with cops being called on them after the guy got pee at being asked again to turn it down and started pounding on the wall and screaming about how he was going to freak us up. They finally got evicted when he threatened someone at the management office on some other matter. Before he got evicted, though, we begged the office to let us move to a different apartment, couldn't afford the lease breaking fee to just leave, and they did let us move to another building, and our new neighbors had a parrot that never shut the frick up, and a special needs child who would literally spend hours banging on their piano screaming singing my name is Amanda what can one do in that situation except grin and bear it, I guess. Once our lease was up, I was so freaking glad to leave that apartment complex. Some noise is expected in apartment buildings. I've certainly lived in other apartments and was fine with the normal expected amount of noise. But when there's zero sound insulation and you have neighbors that don't give a crap, it suck, it suck. When you switch to a different apartment, it was like switching lines in the store to one that you thought was going to be shorter but you were wrong. I have a schizophrenic neighbor that has believed for years that I am hacking his electronic devices, scanning his phone, harassing terrorizing him, etc. Over the years he has claimed I've held an old man hostage in my condo, allowed blood to drip from my patio to his, and that I'm a terrible racist. He leaves notes on the inside of his car accusing me of these things. Guy owned 6 cars and kept them all parked on the street in a very congested block of apartments. 
spent hours tending to them, and they somehow always looked rustier when he was done. If a leaf landed on one of his cars he would accuse the neighborhood of intentionally placing leaves on his car to annoy him. There's a whole list with this one. We moved into an apartment complex and the neighbors right next door on our landing made our experience there extremely uncomfortable to put it lightly. But two weeks after we moved in, 20 armed officers showed up and breached the neighbor's door. But the cops said they couldn't locate the person they were after and that's all the info we got on the incident. But through our shared wall, we heard a man shout if you don't stop doing that I swear to god I'll punch you again. Do you want me to punch you again followed by a child crying. We called CPS and then we were afraid because we were the only ones that could have heard, so they'd know it was us who called. Very often, we'd see strangers at the neighbor's doorstep. When they'd knock on the neighbor's door, it was easy to hear from anywhere in our apps and sometimes we'd think maybe it was our door. Many times, we'd hear a child next door answer, and then shout something like, Mom, so and so is ready, I'd like to believe she was just giving haircuts or something technically still against lease agreement, but based on the types of people showing up at the door, it seems unlikely. We were exiting the apartment at the same time as the neighbors, and lived on the second floor. Their four year old fell all the way down the concrete stairs to the ground level. We were horrified and moved to help. The mother stepped in and ignored us, yelled at her crying and definitely her child, and then quickly got in their car and drove off. We moved after a year and never looked back. But I do think about those kids and I feel sad knowing that so many children are in abusive situations, raised by incompetent parents who were likely raised in the same terrible cycle. Probably our neighbors in our apartment that just let their dang dog bark all day long on their porch. Like I don't think that dog is ever inside even during the winter until it's night time. It's so annoying. A bunch of things with my ding dong neighbor. She had a large dog that hated my older smaller dog one day her dog ran into my yard and bit my dog she did apologize for this one did not happen again neighbor dumped her lawn clippings into my backyard had to ask her to stop and clean up her mess she decided to build a fence no survey so i paid for a survey of my property she started building her fence three feet over on my property i had her stop and remove the fence she was angry and never rebuilt it I painted my house. She painted her house. Same color. I bought a new car. She bought a new car. Same color. Same configuration. There's other minor stuff. But that's enough. Odd person. Very odd. I painted my house. She painted her house. Same color. I bought a new car. She bought a new car. Same color. Same configuration. This is like the final evolution of that kid who imitates everything you do. This family keeps on moving their stuff over to our side of the property. We confronted them but they keep on saying it's their land, because their house has a fireplace that's extruded into our yard. We had to request paperwork from the city to tell them that's not how it works. Then they just kept on throwing their dog crap over the fence, and even dug a hole below the fence to let their dog over to pee and crap. We moved shortly after cause we found a bigger and better place to purchase. Sad thing is all they probably took was heck yeah, we made them move out, so they learned nothing, not that people like that will learn anything anyways. My neighbor was allowing their large dog to crap in my backyard, this happened day after day, I placed a shovel out by my fire pit and when my neighbor was in his yard, I took the shovel and re-gifted it back to their yard, they got the message. Found out they had an elderly cat who couldn't chew properly and that they kept her outside and gave her dry food despite her inability to chew it. Poor creature showed up in our yard a bit ago. Nothing but skin and bones. Soaked from sleeping in the rain, covered in fleas. Gave her some food and water. She's doing pretty alright now. Edit. Update. She hasn't come back into my yard yet, but I've seen her around the neighborhood getting food. She's doing a lot better now. D. Also. Figured out that her food was just getting eaten by other neighborhood animals. Thank you for taking care of her. Had a neighbor a few houses down who kept to himself. One day he was turning onto our road and I happened to be behind him. Some kids were cutting across his yard so he stopped to yell at them and I couldn't go around so I was stuck. He then started backing up but I had only a little room before backing into a very busy road. He then hit the front of my car and yelling at me. 
I was maybe 18 at the time and was legitimately terrified. I was able to make it down the block to my house, called my mom and she encouraged me to make a police report. The officer came, was super kind and offered to go to the house of the man who hit me to get his insurance information. The man refused to answer and the officer made a report and called to check in later in the afternoon. That night the neighbor ended up taking a shotgun and pounded on a few neighbor's doors, presumably looking for me. The police were called and quite a few officers responded. They could not find the man so had everyone on our street shelter in place until they could find him. Officers ended up finding him under a boat in his backyard. I don't know if he was arrested or committed but he never was back at his house and his family sold it a few months later. Probably committed. That's some crazy behavior. My downstairs neighbor was building bombs and accidentally detonated something that was in progress and wrecked his hands. A nurse at the hospital notified police that the wounds were suspicious and they came to investigate. I was woken up to police forcibly entering his apartment. Shortly after an officer notified us that we needed to evacuate as there was a likely M lab in the apartment. There wasn't. It was only bombs. After the polar vortex a few years ago, the mail finally came. Sub-zero temperatures froze the snow in a way that mail couldn't be delivered. I was basically in my house for a week and just so delighted about the mail seeing another person outside that I said hello to a neighbor I know better than to talk to. She immediately burst into tears and started telling me about how she found out her boyfriend ejaculated into her coffee every morning. Right around this time, her big dog burst through the front door and before she could finish saying, he won't hurt you, the dog bit me in the stomach. Luckily didn't draw blood. I kindly excused myself and went back into my home to regret ever leaving in the first place. A true story. Bunch of sea kids moved into an apartment down the hall during COVID because the landlord property manager neglected a proper background check out of desperation to lease it out. Sea kids continually invited their sea kid friends over, and the whole place deteriorated beyond belief. Uber Eats, mailroom parcels and HelloFresh deliveries disappeared into thin air. Storage cages were broken into and three entire cars were stolen. The police were notified over and over again, but the issue was actually locating the main culprit in order to detain ETC. She was not on the lease but one of the frequent visitors. The cherry on top was when one of the sea kids decided to take a ginormous, sloppy crap in the lobby, on the floor, right outside the elevators. I so badly wanted to believe it belonged to someone's sick dog and that they would be back downstairs any moment to clean it up, but the huge smear on the corner wall, which I later learned was where the culprit had wiped her butt, and the crap, filled adult underwear flung down the other end of the corridor said otherwise. It stayed there until morning because the building manager couldn't find an available after hours cleaner. Sea heads continued to live there for at least a solid month while building management fought the landlord to evict them. The landlord was informed of all of the above and still allowed them to continue leasing the apartment because they worried they'd struggle to find anyone else to replace them since covered lockdowns and associated financial burdens caused so many rentals to become vacant. What's your best idiot neighbor story? My dad had a neighbor when he was young that played his radio loudly all day, even when he wasn't home or was gone on vacation. Every time he left the house and his radio was still on, my dad would go and trip the circuit breaker to his condo. One day he sees my dad, who was an electrical engineer, and asked him why his breaker kept tripping, was it faulty wiring? No, my dad explained, the loud radio was probably just putting too much strain on the circuit when left on all the time. My dad suggested he should try turning it down or off when he wasn't home, and see if that fixed it. So the man tried it, and surprise surprise, the circuit breaker stopped tripping. He was very thankful to my dad for helping him with that annoying electrical issue. Genius. When I was a kid we had this guy living next door who seemed like a nice guy. This is the mid 90s and he had an ear business. So he was doing pretty well for himself. Then he got together with a crackhead and his house slowly started going to crap. Literally. At one point his septic system went up and since they were smoking every dime he made he decided that he was just going to make a cesspit. We live on the east coast in the mid-Atlantic. It gets hot and humid come July. Thanks to this guy, our entire neighborhood smelled like a spot a pot at midsummer festival for about 3 months. Fast forward to January, nice and snowy, we come home to our house being broken into. Computer is gone, TV is gone, 
bunch of movies and meds are gone. Cops show up and they start dusting and looking around. They go outside and lo and behold there are tracks going from our side door back to the neighbor's house. Of course, they deny everything and are at least smart enough not to keep the stuff around after we got home. They were not smart enough to use different names they pawned everything though. Needless to say, we had new neighbors within a few months of this incident. I live on a 50 plus acre New England farm. About 2 stroke 3 of it is wooded. After I'd been here for about a year I was walking the boundary stone wall, about 10 feet on my side of the land. From a neighbor's yard I hear a bellowing voice, you'd better not be on my land. I replied I'm not, I'm on my own land. He yells back, from somewhere in the trees on his side just so you know, never stop foot on my land. Me, okay, we've got a deal, and you stay off mine, okay. I hear a grunt. Then I ask by the way, is this your deer hunting tree stand on my side of the wall? At which point he exploded that stand has been there for 10 years. <laughs> Neighbor dug a hole in our side yard because she needed dirt. Both of us live on an acre of land. I had a neighbor with a drag racing car. At the time, we didn't have a count. Like clockwork, at dinner time, he would start the car and revved it so loud my windows rattled. If we had any windows open, because it was summer, we wouldn't be able to have dinner conversation. One day, I'd had enough. I walked to the fence and got his attention and politely asked if he could maybe not rev the car at dinner time. I said I was cool with it otherwise. His answer was frick you. Frick me? He okay. I went inside and called the police and filed a noise complaint. They came out, heard it live, and wrote him up. He fought it in court, so I had to go. Judge asked me what happened. I told the story above. She asked him and his wife of it was true. They said yes. Boom $1000 fine. Judge told me to call the police if it continued. To be clear, I wasn't wasting 911 time. I was calling the non-emergency ordinance enforcement number. All Damas had to do was avoid one hour a day and we'd have been fine. I never called again, because he didn't rev during dinner. One day his common law wife gets in my face about calling again. I told her I didn't, but she wouldn't believe me. He got hit with a second $1000 fine. Turns out it was the neighbor two houses away who was a migraine sufferer and had similarly tried the neighborly approach first. They are lucky they just got a fine from the other neighbor. As a fellow migraine sufferer, when they hit my mind isn't functioning on all cylinders, I'd probably have taken a bat to the car. I watched my across the street neighbor cut his three quarter acre lawn entirely with an electric weed whacker because he didn't have time to drive a mile to get gas for his lawn mower. I kid you not, this one dude in my neighborhood let his grass get so tall that he couldn't use a lawn mower on it. I was driving one day and saw the sucker with a weed whacker going up grass taller than him. We lived next to this big guy in an apartment building, front doors inside a hallway. Now, he was a nice enough guy, but he was always cleaning a puddle up in front of his apartment every other day. We'd always ask him if everything was alright, and he'd talk some incoherent crap about how he hates management. So, out of curiosity, I asked management when I happened to be in the rental office, and the lady rolls her eyes and says, this idiot fills up his tub to the brim, and sits his fat butt in the tub. The water, of course floods his entire apartment, and comes out into the hallway, and this idiot has the balls to blame us somehow I pretty much said, jeez, sounds rough and scurried on back to my place. If the tub story is really the truth, this guy must be dumb as rocks. Couple that lives across the hall from me fights often and loudly. One night, the girl found something on the guy's phone that she found objectionable, either pee or evidence of cheating. Either way she was yelling a lot about skanks and s. So she throws his phone off the second floor balcony onto the concrete walkway below where it shatters. A guy then goes back inside grabs her phone and does the same. Moral of the story is, an iPhone for an iPhone makes the whole world entertaining for the neighbors. When I lived with my parents, we had a knock at the door one day from our neighbors across the road. They told us a story that resulted in their car getting stolen the night before. Apparently, the wife had seen a strange looking man wandering around the street late at night. He had apparently been looking into car windows which were parked on driveways, including our cars. The next morning, their BMW was gone, including the keys which were hanging by the front door of their house. 
They assumed the strange man looking in car windows had somehow fished the keys from the house via the letterbox. The whole thing sounded very strange. To not call the police when a man is literally peering through car windows on people's driveways was strange enough. Months later, the neighbors got a divorce and sold their house. Turns out, they'd made the whole thing up and had dumped the car for the insurance as they had fallen on hard times. Apparently, their crappy story hadn't held up well and they were found out. Who broadcasts a story like that? Why make yourself look stupid for not calling the police when seeing a strange man eyeing up cars? Then tell all the neighbors about the man? A neighbor messed up when building a home and put his entire home well within my property. Large piece of land with two huge clearings connected to two roads but separated by a large isthmus of trees. I didn't notice because I had taken an 8th month vacation right after he started building. Huge property. I didn't go around and inspect it often. So I got a real estate lawyer and surveyors to confirm it was in my property. I was going to sell him that clearing for a good price until I went to talk to him and he was the biggest butthole I had ever met. He essentially told me that he is going to sue me for leading him on despite the fact that I did not know him nor have did I meet him before that day. His wife flipped my girlfriend and I as we were pulling out of their driveway. Four months later, I file a lawsuit saying he must destroy the property or turn it over to me immediately. It would have cost him more to demolish it and return the site to original condition so he signed the house over to me. He was still out for construction costs. I was living in a single wide with my girlfriend. Then I had brand new, 2600 square featuring house with all the hookups for water, electric, and cable for free. Got the land for next to nothing. Sold it for almost 50 times the value. I feel like this is better than winning the lottery. My upstairs neighbors moo at each other. Very loudly. I used to live in the country and it sounds exactly like a cow. And me and my roommate have no idea why they do it. Nobody believes us until they come over and hear it for themselves. We moo back at them sometimes now if they get too loud and they usually stop for a while. They're just weird people though. I love that you moo back. My constantly drunk neighbor came up with the brilliant idea that he could collect the leaves in the stone parking lot with his snow blower. He duct taped a plastic garbage bag over the discharge chute, and off he goes. It actually inflated the bag for a few moments until the stones started flying. He broke three windows on his garage door and splattered a bunch of cars in the lot. Crap my britches laughing. I could write a book on all the stupid crap I saw him do. Neighbor before I bought the house every day would park but use a wide sweeping arc to get into his spot, over my lawn. After asking many times for him to stop I put an enormous rock directly in that path on my own property. Lo and behold he smashed into it hard. After threatening to sue very loudly and forcefully I informed him I'm a lawyer and he damaged me rock on my property and is liable for all the damages to my brand new rock. He stopped driving on my lawn after. Back in high school, one of our neighbors moved away and their house sold to this older woman and her mostly grown sons. She was a strange one. She cut down every tree on her property because of the bad spirits in them. The sons seemed to be popular, having people drop by at all hours. All was relatively quiet until one day, while I was home alone, there was a knock on the door. Two gentlemen in very nice black suits and dark ties then identified themselves as FBI and asked me if we were ever approached by crazy lady or her sons to buy anything. I basically replied with they are crazy and we don't talk to them. They don't talk to us they hand me their business card then proceed on to the next house. I look out the window and I see. Five blue Ford Tauruses. Three red Ford Astro vans. And one Viacom truck that was being loaded with box after box from the neighbor's garage. Turns out the sons were making those special cable boxes that got you all of the channels for free. After this it was only the strange lady left in that house. My neighbor is an overweight middle aged woman that seems to have a bad knee only when my kids are outside in the summer. If they are playing in my fenced in backyard, she'll pretend to fall down so they can help her up. I went from kids, you should help her. That's what neighbors do to she fell again. It seems like she only falls when you guys are playing. She doesn't fall when I'm working in the garden. To if she falls again, come get me. When I started saying that, 
she seemed to be able to get up pretty quickly. I had to go over there in August and tell her that I can't have my kids helping her get up anymore. They are 7 and 8 years old and they can't give her medical aid. I get that she is probably lonely, but 3 or 4 times a week, I'd hear her yell kids, kids help me up, I fell again. I had a prob with a neighbor who drove over my lawn with his ATVs and damaged the grass shrubs. He said he'd pay for damage but that never happened and he kept doing it. So I put my huge trailer across their tracks to block their path. They went around it. I put up two other barriers that they also drove around. So I found this huge branch that had fallen in the woods between our properties and dragged it across to cover the third path they were making across my yard. But the branch got caught on a cable. What is a cable doing over the lawn instead of properly buried? So I called the cable company to have it buried. They said I was the only registered client on that box and to disconnect it. So I did. After the weekend, my neighbor came by going total apper shit at me for disconnecting his cable. He yelled he was going to call the cops on me. So I left. I got a call from the cops. Cops asked if I disconnected cable because of the ATV issue. Interesting. I wasn't even going to mention the ATV issue, but my neighbor already did. So long story short, the neighbor got a warning ticket for trespassing and admitted to stealing cable. I took an offer on my house that very day and moved. That guy is a freaking dumbass, calling the cops for the crime he committed. I wonder how many times this happens. I have crazy neighbors. They are actually very nice as neighbors go, but the family is totally dysfunctional. They have two grown up daughters living there, along with their teenage daughters and their boyfriends. One has a kid. There are roughly 10 people living there ranging from 5 to 70. They keep the yard mowed and keep to themselves mostly, but they are bat crap insane. I like them actually for two reasons. First, they are notorious and crazy around our town so everyone leaves them alone. So little crime around us. Second, they are entertainment. One morning my aunt was visiting. We are on the front porch and I am telling her about all the neighbors. I was telling her a story about how one of the younger granddaughters gets in a fight with her boyfriend at 2am on a Tuesday night. They are screaming at each other, walking up and down the street, explaining that something like that happens once a week. Like clockwork, one of the daughters comes out screaming back at someone and gets in her car. Her daughter comes out and tries to stop her from backing out. She grabs a shovel from he back of the truck and starts hitting the front windshield of the car, stattering it. They call the cops. Meanwhile the granddaughter with the shovel calls her bio dad who lives down the road. He picks his daughter up. Two minutes later the cops show up, but she is gone. I have hundreds like this. Your front lawn is like an episode of Dr. Phil Omori Povic. I almost envy you. I had a neighbor on our old street who were pretty sure was on some serious drugs. When we first moved there, he wanted to invite us to a BBQ. But we declined because we were still busy unpacking and said maybe another time. A few months later, we hear a woman in distress. And turns out he was beating his wife in the middle of the street. We called for her to come over here so she could call police or whatever. The wife left him, and some drama between both of them throughout the years. It's irrelevant to us though. Because our family helped his wife, we were his enemy and he harassed us multiple times throughout the years. We'd call the police and they'd come out and basically have him stop for a time. At one point, he bought a megaphone and started yelling threats and swears at us. Another time he started driving his motorcycle around our neighborhood to annoy us and then used the motorcycle's back tire to throw dirt and rocks at our car. We called the police who told him don't do this again. He denied he ever did it in the same breath that he said he did because my mom is evil. A few years later I go to get the mail and I hear him talking to his one two year old child. Basically telling the child the woman over there is evil. Never trust her referring to my mom. I tell my mom and she's thinking oh boy what's he up to now later that afternoon he drives by our house very slowly and stops staring into our living room window. He later goes home and uses his megaphone to insult my mom and yell threats at us again. One specific threat being you better not leave your kids alone or something will happen to them my mom calls the police. They recommend a restraining order. The next day and his ex-wife calls us. Saying her kids heard him saying he was going to get a restraining order against us. We filed one at the same time so we had the same court date. He told the court that my mom had been training me and my siblings. And an unnamed teenage boy 
to climb his fence and go into his tree at night to harass him and one night he caught us and we all ran back into our house at my mom's orders. Apparently we only harassed him when his kids were at his ex-wife's. He basically spouted insanity throughout the entire court hearing and the judge asked for our side of the story and we told him. The judge asked if our neighbor was taking any meds and he told the judge yes. I was taking antipsychotics but I stopped them the judge then told him that my family would never bother him again and granted us our restraining order. Dude was completely insane. I worry about how those kids of his turned out. I was off sick one day, and my roommate came home for lunch and checked the mail. We got a letter with no return address, sent to the rooftop pot smokers, with our address on it. We knew it was for our next door neighbors since one of them had a chair on the roof and smoked up there. Since it had no actual name, and our address on it, I was like heck yeah I might open this it'll be hilarious. As I'm opening the taped envelope, a little bit of white powder sprinkled onto my lap. My roommate and I looked at each other and were like UHH, WTF. So I got up and took the letter outside to open it. A crap ton of white powder came out of the letter when we took it out of the envelope. So we grabbed a Ziploc bag and some tongs, and sealed up the letter. The letter was typed and said random crap like to the butthole who likes smoking pot on the roof and yelling at people on the street with kids, you'd better have good insurance cause I'll damage your stuff. I'm ex-military and have nothing better to do than to watch over you, you peed off the wrong guy, blah blah blah. And at the end it said by the way the substance in this envelope is toxic, so you might want to get yourself to a hospital. Who's the mother sucker now? At that point we were half laughing, half concerned, so I called the cops due to worst in case. They took it very seriously and sent out everyone. Cops, paramedics, fire trucks, RCMP. My roommate works for them, and the tactical unit, our version of SWAT, the street was closed off, we were quarantined to our garage, and every neighbor who was home at the time came out to take a look. Everyone was told to go back inside and stay put. The tactical team got suited up in hazmat suits and went in our house to test the letter envelope. We were in the garage for almost 3 hours. The tactical guys came back out and said the substance was found to be non-toxic but they still had to do some more tests to figure out exactly what it was. At that point we were taken into the ambulance for a look over and then back to the garage. Turns out the white powder was freaking pancake mix. My roommate and I, along with the cops and tactical guys burst out laughing together. We thanked the response teams and they left. The police stayed behind to get our statements and questioned the next door neighbors to whom the letter was supposed to be sent. A detective followed up with us a couple of times, since it was a threat and sent through the mail, it was a serious offense. The letter envelope was sent off to forensics for testing. Unfortunately nothing was found and the case was closed. The people in that house caused some crap the entire time they lived there. Noise complaints, trash left everywhere outside, etc. But this incident really takes the cake. Luckily they have all since moved out. Dickbags. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.